The idea behind this ship is pretty simple. Take a successful small cargo hauler and make it jumbo. And bright orange. But how does it perform in-game right now? I'm Farrister, and in this video I review the Star Citizen ship, the currently flyable MISC Freelancer Max. As with some of the most interesting ships, she's multi-crew capable, although can easily be flown solo, and is described as a medium freight ship. For those of you who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, you'll know the drill by now. This video is split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review, and if you're one of the three quarters of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you may choose to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Part 1. Ship Tour And whilst the Freelancer Max does have multiple entrances, most commonly players will access it from the cargo ramp at the rear. This takes you through into the expansive cargo bay at the back of the ship, which does include access to the turret, but also has the vast majority of the cargo storage space available. There will be component storage access in this portion of the ship. And right at the top, you'll be able to climb into the top mounted rear turret. The turret chair drops down and takes you up into the turret at the top of the back of the ship. The turret itself does feel fairly enclosed, which makes you feel nice and secure as a gunner. The cargo bay is easily wide enough to be able to store a rock mining rover. Moving forward to what is called the airlock section, there is some additional cargo storage on either side, and at the top of the ship is an airlock entry point. The next section further forward is the habitation section. There's a small kitchenette hidden behind a cupboard, and a ladder which leads to the outside of the ship. The ladder is great for a secure way of getting in and out of the Freelancer. There's also a small bathroom hidden behind a door. There are four beds for the crew. These are log out locations and in the future may double up as escape pods. And then right at the front of the ship is the cockpit. There's a seat for the pilot, a seat for the co-pilot and two support seats. Part 2 combat performance. Although the stock weapons vary slightly, the hard points on the Freelancer Max are exactly the same as for the base model. On the neck are four gimbaled pilot controlled size 3 weapons, and at the back on top is a human operated turret with dual size 2 weapons. In addition there are 8 missiles, 4 at size 3 and 4 at size 2. All in all, that gives the Freelancer Max fairly reasonable firepower, especially against smaller attackers. The fact that all of the pilot weapons are on turrets gives them a strong gimbaled performance, which is helpful as precisely pointing the nose can be a little challenging. The weapons also provide enough forward firepower to deal with various fighter-sized combat threats. The turret is sadly a little gimmicky, with fairly low firepower and a fairly limited arc of fire being placed atop the ship. It's a nice idea to include it, but the placement is a little awkward, especially if you have a full hold of cargo. Thankfully, the Freelancer Max is protected by dual size 2 shield generators, which make for a reasonable defensive screen, so you'll be able to take a bit of a beating if needs be. Remembering that the Freelancer is a cargo hauler rather than a dedicated combat ship, it's fair to say that it has the teeth to defend itself, but that there are better options out there for hardcore combat pilots. Part 3. Handling and Visibility Starting with visibility, 
the Freelancer Max features the absolutely awful MISC cockpit, which offers only a thin sliver of visibility around the pilot, and also is far too reflective. So don't expect to have good vision when flying. This is designed to be a space truck, and is also designed to feel like it. There is a window right above the pilot's head which lets you see immediately above you, which is useful to know if the hangar doors are open or closed. Handling wise, you'll also feel like this is a space truck. It's not slow, and it certainly handles better than a caterpillar for instance, but it does carry momentum through turns, so if you pull hard on the stick or the pedals, you can expect the nose to keep moving a little further around than you might find ideal. Planet side, things get a little interesting. The Freelancer Max struggles at low speeds, particularly in high gravity locations like Hurston or Microtech, and this characteristic is particularly noticeable when you're trying to use the thrusters beneath the Max to keep it airborne. But flying more akin to regular flight, using those powerful engines at the back, the Freelancer Max handles just fine. Sure, you'll need to pilot a little carefully, but it's not as prone to falling out of the sky. Sadly, that can often make landing fairly challenging, especially in situations where you may be reliant on the underside thrusters, such as coming into a bay in Lawville. All of that said, the Freelancer Max is still fairly forgiving as an entry-level cargo hauler, for a prudent pilot who knows they're flying a cargo truck and doesn't try to throw it around. As far as the stock quantum drive goes, it's incredibly slow, but thankfully the Freelancer Max is gifted with generous quantum fuel stores, so even with an upgraded drive, you'll comfortably be able to cross the Stanton system. Part 4 Operating Costs Across refuel, repair, and rearmament costs, the Freelancer Max is fairly cheap to operate, with costs usually in the three figure or low four figure ballpark. And that's good, because if you're hauling cargo, most of your risk is in those little crates at the back of your ship, so the last thing you need is expensive refuel costs adding to your troubles. As far as cargo trading goes, with 120 units of cargo, the Freelancer Max offers sufficient space to turn a profit. It's unlikely to be huge right now, but this ship is much easier to fly than the Caterpillar, and the smaller cargo stores means it's more likely you'll be able to fill up at your destination. The cargo bay is also a great size for taking your own refined mining goods for sale. But outside of cargo trading, the Freelancer Max has some other great money making options. It might not be your first choice, but combat contracts are well within the ability of this ship to clean up, including some of the riskier bounty hunting missions. Clearly, there is plenty of storage space for box delivery type contracts, and whilst it's not money made by the Max per se, the bay in the back comfortably fits a rock mining rover, and it's easy to drive in without having to worry about too many glitches or gimmicks. Part 5 The Verdict So where does all of that leave the Freelancer Max? It's versatile, which is a great characteristic for Star Citizen, able to run cargo, load vehicles in the back, hold its own in combat, and bring friends along with you for the ride. It's fairly easy to fly if you're cautious and tentative, which makes it a great option for a first ship. But then, it's quite expensive for a first ship, especially for a solo player. At $150, it's up there against some tough competition, including the Constellation Taurus, whenever that's released. And whilst I'm always hugely supportive of multi-crew ships, the crew complement of four for the Freelancer Max seems hopeful. Although there are seats and stations for every member of the crew, there really isn't much for them to do, which is a shame. Don't get me wrong, $150 for a big orange ship that can introduce you to a lot of gameplay loops might be okay, especially if you know you'd like it, but it's a lot to pay for a solo player getting into the game. The in-game price of 2.2 million Alpha UEC, however, might be a much better option as a Stage 2 ship for newer players. With a bed, secure entry, 
and a decent sized cargo bay, the Freelancer Max could turn out to be fairly future proofed. But do you agree? What do you think of the Freelancer Max? Let me know by sharing your thoughts in the comments. And if you've enjoyed the video, you might consider clicking the like button. Outside of that, if you're looking for a group who plays Star Citizen regularly, I've included a link to my organisation in the video description. Thank you for watching.